Do you ever wonder how you turned out the way you did, or who else you might have become? Qualities like our height, weight, and looks are called complex traits. They result from the interaction of many genes. Who we are is the result of all sorts of combinations of genetic interactions, and how these dynamic interactions are shaped as we develop and grow. Now, evolution has tailored the system so precisely that if two copies of the same DNA blueprint develop, like identical twins, you get basically the same picture. A scientist named Waddington called this developmental reproducibility canalization. Hi, I'm Andrew Pospisilic and this is Kevin Dalgard. We work at the Max Planck Institute of Immunobiology and Epigenetics, and together with a team of colleagues from around the world, we've been trying to understand how canalization or phenotypic variation happens. A while ago now, we started studying a strain of mice missing one copy of a gene called TRIM28. What made these mice so interesting was that even though they were basically genetically identical, their body weights were all over the map. Tracking lots of mice, we noticed that their body weight distributions weren't normal or Gaussian, they actually had a second bump. This meant that even though they had the same DNA, the same parents, and the same environments, they were coming out either lean or obese, but with nobody in between. Because the mice had essentially identical DNA, and because the lean to fat ratios were non-Mendelian, we called this bistable epigenetic obesity. We found that a specific network of imprinted genes was reduced in the obese animals. Imprinted genes are, well, interesting. During part of your life, they're only expressed from either the DNA your dad gave you, or from the DNA your mom gave you, but not from both, like most genes. Imprinted genes are important for your brain development, for growth, and for metabolism. Interestingly, what we also found was that deleting other members of the imprinted gene network also triggered a bistable epigenetic obesity on inbred backgrounds. This indicated that the members of the network were acting together, creating something like a switch that flips the DNA output to either lean or obese. Using a set of carefully collected adipose tissue samples, we found that some human children had signatures of the same epigenetic phenotype we see in our mice. These children were obese, had low trim 28, and had a very different pattern of gene expression than other children, including their imprinted genes. So why does all this matter? Well, believe it or not, some species are known to be able to canalize down more than one developmental trajectory creating different types of individuals from the same DNA blueprint. This phenomenon, called polyphenism, is what creates worker and soldier ants, for instance. Perhaps more dramatic, some butterfly species can be born in different sizes, shapes, and colors, depending on the season. So, while far from proven, our data suggests that we may actually be more like bugs than we like to think. That mammals, too, might have the potential to produce discrete, polyphenic outcomes from our DNA. So once again, do you ever wonder who else you could have been? Who am I? Or maybe more importantly, who am I not?